All right, we're back. So again, we're looking at functions to characterize them. All right, so recall the parent functions from grade 11. We had different functions in grade 11 that you learned. For example, you learned the linear function, the quadratic function. So again, the first one is the linear equation. Second one is the quadratic equation. Moving on, we learned the cubic function, the absolute function, the reciprocal function, the exponential function. Now this isn't a general exponential. This is a uh, this is a specific exponential function with a base of 2. A general exponential function would have a to the power of x. Fine, uh, look, we looked at sinusoidals, one of them being the sine function, and the other sinusoidal function is the cosine function, and finally the one that we forgot to mention was the root function. So these are all the different functions you should have learned in grade 11. Now, let's try and match the sketches of each of these functions. So as we move forwards, we're looking at all of these different functions over here. And what are we looking at? Let's look at all of these and, and put their perspectives. Once we're done that, we'll describe the properties of each. But the idea is we first want to match the different graphs. So let's go through each of them. So the linear function hopefully is pretty easy you know that that represents this one right here. So this matches with this function right here. The next one, x squared, is the parabola. The parabola is this very, this sketch matches the parabola. The next one is the cubic function, which looks like this. And then we have the absolute function, which we saw in 1.2, right there, folks. We have the reciprocal function, which is this one here, which has, funny enough, two asymptotes. We have the exponential function, which has one asymptote. It's a horizontal asymptote. We have the sine function, which is this one. Now, if you remember, we didn't really draw that that way. We had a basic function, and it looked very similar to the following. When we draw the basic of this, what we got was... Let's try that again. Okay, and oh, let's try that again. All right, so we had a basic function that looked like the following. All right, so we had the graph started at the 0, 0, and it moved and came back up like that. Another example is the one down here. Okay, so these both represent the sine function. Then we had the cosine function, which is this one, and don't forget it's periodic, it repeats itself. And finally, the root function, those of you that remember the root, the root was kind of funny because it actually had only one arrow, and the other arrow actually is not an arrow, but it's a point. It starts at 0, 0, and it moves in this direction. All right, so what we're going to do is describe the properties of each of these. So we're going to state the domain and range, whether they increase or decrease, the points of discontinuity, the, uh, in, uh, the intercepts, whether they're x and y, and what they are, the symmetry, so whether they're even, odd, or neither, and finally their end behaviors. So we're going to take each one of these graphs and describe each one individually. All right, next part. So take the domain of range, increasing and decreasing intervals, discontinuities or asymptotes, the x and y intercepts, the y intercept, um, the symmetry, and finally the end behavior. For let's look at the first one which was the absolute graph that we saw. So the absolute function, don't forget, looks like this. y equals, or f at x equals, sorry, let's try that again. f at x equals the absolute of x. So, what does this mean for us? Okay, so the domain of this absolute function is x belongs to real. That's the first part. And the next part is the range. And the range for this function, well, let's, let's go back and do this in interval notation. So the domain is x belongs to, x belongs to from, what is the domain? Well, it's from negative infinity up to infinity. 
The next part is the range, which is y belongs to, the interval from, now it's not going to be round bracket, but square bracket from 0 all the way up to infinity. All right, increasing. What is the intervals of increase? Intervals of increase go from, now where is this graph where the y values are going up as you move from left to right? Well, that's from 0 to infinity. And where are they going down, decreasing? Well, that is the case of the interval from negative infinity up to zero. All right, now there's a points of discontinuity uh, in this. Are there any points of discontinuity? No, they're not. This is completely continuous across the domain. X-intercepts and Y-intercept are both the same. It's at zero, zero. And that's all there is, folks. Symmetry, is this even or odd? Automatically do, in, do a horizontal reflection and you find out that this function is even symmetry and find the end behaviors. So, how do you describe end behaviors? Well, as X approaches negative infinity, so that would be this particular arrow right here, where is it going? What are the y values doing? The y values are also approaching, uh, and, well, they're not approaching negative infinity. In fact, they're approaching positive infinity. So as x is approaching negative infinity, so as looking at the graph, as x approaches in the negative direction, what are the y values? They're going up to positive infinity. So we do the same for the next part and write it as x approaches positive infinity. What are the y values doing? Well, they are also approaching positive infinity. Another way that you could have written this, okay, is to save yourself time and money, all right, uh, well, not money, but obviously time, is you write as x approaches positive or negative infinity, the y value is approaching positive infinity. So whether it's positive or negative infinity, the y values still approach positive infinity. And that's the case. If they're approaching both the same direction, uh, and uh, the x and y are approaching different directions, but the y value is approaching the same direction. So again, the x's are approaching differently, and but then the y's are approaching the same. All right, let's look at the next graph. Okay. So the next graph is this one right here. What graph does this represent? Well, it's the exponential. In our case, we're just going to look at which exponential we were given in the question. And the question we were given is f at x is equal to 2 to the power of x. That's the function we're looking at here. What's the domain of this function? Well, again, the domain for this, just like an absolute function, the domain of this is from negative infinity up to infinity. So x belongs to real. Now, what's the range? Well, if you look carefully, the y, there's an asymptote. And because there's an asymptote, it means that it doesn't reach 0. The function gets really, really close to 0, but it doesn't actually touch it. So it's round bracket at 0 up to infinity. Now, increasing. This graph is forever increasing. This basic function in its in its parent form, so in the basic form, is always increasing. So it is increasing on the interval from negative infinity up to infinity. Now, decreasing, it's never decreasing, so we can just ignore that. Asymptotes, yes, there is. There's one at y equals, sorry, yes, at y equals 0. So all the values of y at 0 do not exist. X-intercepts, there are none. Y-intercepts, there are none. Oops, sorry, no, there is. What's the Y-intercept, folks? Well, you plug in 0 for the X, and you find out the Y-intercept is 1. Symmetry. If I reflect this particular graph horizontally, it will not be even. I then take the even function, and I reflect that vertically, and that function will not be the same as the original function. So in this case, the exponential function is neither even nor odd. 
So that's the symmetry. Now, in behavior. So what we have going on here is that as the x approaches positive infinity, sorry, negative infinity, let's, let's do from the leftmost side, negative infinity, what's the y value approaching? Well, it's approaching 0, but from what side? What's important is to look at the details here. This is approaching 0, but from what side? Is it from the top part of 0 or from the bottom part of 0? Because imagine if I give you these details, are you able to graph it? Well, here would be caused my problems. Is y approaches 0? But you'd be like, which side does y approach 0? Well, it approaches 0 from the upper side, so from the positive side. And now, as x approaches, as x approaches positive infinity, the graph y is approaching positive infinity as well. So here is where we would draw two. We would write two separate sets of M behavior. All right. That's the end of this function. Let's move on to the next. All right, looking at this one, we're looking at the parabola now. At the parabola, we need to be able to state, so the parabola has the function f at x equals x squared. That's the equation, basic equation of a basic parabola. So the basic parabola, f at x equals x squared, has the domain as of negative infinity to positive infinity, exactly the same as the absolute function. So from negative infinity up to positive infinity, or x belongs to real, and the y, the range is also the same as the absolute function, which is square bracket 0 up to infinity. All right, levels, areas of increasing, exactly the same as the absolute. It increases from 0 to infinity, and it decreases on the x-coordinates from negative infinity up to 0. Areas of discontinuity, none, no asymptotes, x-intercept and y-intercept are the same, so we're looking at from 0, 0 for both of them. Area symmetry, well, if I take this parabola and I rotate, uh, reflect it horizontally, we find out that this definitely stays the same, so the function is even, and find the end behaviors, same as the absolute, so as x approaches, positive or negative infinity, doesn't matter which direction, we note that the y values approach the same direction, which is positive infinity. All right, that's the end of this. Let's move on to the next video for the remaining functions.